Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking to you about modifications you can make to the Lanshan 1 tent. It's already a great tent, lightweight, good value, very compact, but there are several things you can do to make it even better and they all work very well. So I'm going to be running through them one by one. First of all, I'm going to get it pitched. Sense all pitched now, including all the modifications I've made, so let's run through them one by one. Let's start off with the most common, biggest modification that uh, is uh, very well known, and that's to do with the main uh, guy lines now. The guy line setup that the factory supply with the tent I think is pretty rubbish and it has a lot of drawbacks. It may be uh, lightweight, but it isn't very strong. So I've binned the yellow guy lines that came from the factory. We'll talk about the bottom of the doors in a second, but at the top here, I've basically uh, done a 60 centimeter loop of Dyneema that starts at the top loop, carries on down, loops around, and comes back to this put out point for the ventilation point. So that's a 60 centimeter loop with a bowl in at each end where it touches the tent. Then I have my main guy line that uh, loops around that and uh, has a, a cleat and runs all the way along and down to a beefy bag sunk deep in, into the ground. Now that main guy line uh, is at least three meters long. I found to give a good direction of pull and uh, versatility. I don't know if there's a tree or a fence or something I might be able to use instead of a peg. Now with this modification made, you get a much better direction of pull from the guy line. So the factory guy line would just come to a point somewhere here. Um, but with my uh, modification, it extends somewhere over the, peg the pegs in the ground, somewhere over here. So you, the direction of pull from the guy line is much more, if you like, horizontal and uh, it's much more effective. Okay, so then that leads us on to what happens at the bottom of the doors. Here we are at the bottom of the doors and all I've done is to simply replace the yellow uh, cord that came with the tent with two lengths of bungee, uh, one attached to the bottom of each door. Now um, you may ask why there are different colours of bungee. I'll tell you why. If they're sharing a peg in particular it's uh, quite handy to know which bungee is attached to which door. I tend to open the uh, right hand door if you like more often than the left so I have a thinner length of black bungee attached to that door and because the other one is uh, left sort of attached more often and is more critical to the pitch of the tent I have a slightly thicker length of white bungee going to that door. I've looped the bungee through the tab at the bottom of the door twice and that gives me some choices. If I'm uh, setting the tent quite high for good ventilation then I can just have one length of bungee stretching out. But in uh, more uh, windier weather or whatever in the winter, when I've got the tent sent lower, I can uh, double up the bungee length around the peg. And that allows me to set the tent a whole lot lower and be more strong. And whilst we're talking about the bungees at the bottom of the door, uh, I've also um, attached a little carabiner to the bungee. And that means that if I open up the door for ventilation or whatever, or cooking, I can just clip this carabiner over the uh, side guy then or something like that. And that holds the door open really nicely for me. Uh, a little tip uh, for the Lanshan 1, it's particular to the Lanshan 1, because the Lanshan 1 has a uh, peg out point at the middle of the rear of the tent. And when you're unpacking the tent, and particularly in windy conditions, it's quite important to know which peg out point that is. Uh, firstly, so you don't uh, assume it's one of the corners and get all muddled up. But also if it's windy, you really want this uh, side facing into the wind. So if you peg this point out first, the tent will naturally blow into the correct direction. And so what I've done is on this peg out point, attached a little loop of uh, coloured cord so I know when I'm unpacking the tent, that's the one that needs to be facing into the wind. Most people are fully aware of the idea of using the spare walking pole, if you like, when you're pitching the tent, uh, to uh, tuck underneath the guy line at the rear to create a nice direction of 
pool to create more interior space. But what I've done on mine is to take the same idea and to use it at the side pull out points as well. Now of course you're unlikely to be walking with four walking poles and so what I've done is to, uh, I got these short lengths of carbon fibre, uh, I think I found them on eBay. The guy who did them isn't uh, operating anymore but I'm told if you go to an archery shop then a carbon fibre arrow shaft is the kind of thing that you're looking for or other people have used uh, bits of uh, obsolete uh, tent pole for example, sections of a tent pole, anything like that and uh, even on a uh, walk in the Black Mountains uh, the other week I was just used a length of uh, branch that was hanging around to do the same thing but basically anything that lifts the uh, direction of pull for these side guidelines more up than down is going to create a lot of better space inside the tent. So with those two side poles in place I'm lifting the sides of the tent up quite nicely but there is another way without using those two poles and I'm going to show that to you now. Okay so now I've achieved a similar amount of lift on the sides but there's no poles what's going on? So I've uh, used the idea of a catenary line I think it's called. Let me show you what I've done. So uh, I have a length of two millimeter diameter Dyneema running from the top of the tent down through the pull out loop and then out uh, over a meter uh, to a peg. And I've used one length actually of Dyneema that goes up over the top and then down the other side in the same, in the same way through the pull out point and out uh, to the peg. So that's uh, length of Dyneema is <laughs> I think it's 10 meters or something crazy. But the, the line goes from the top of the tent through the loop and out to the peg. So as you tension the line it's going to want to go straight, wants to straighten and uh, that in turn lifts the pull out point up and out from the tent. So you get the same effect as with the sticks but uh, without needing to carry any extra poles or find a branch or anything like that at all. And I've used the same principle at the back of the tent. So here I've got my length of Dyneema attached to the top, running down through the put-out point and then out to a peg. That length of Dyneema is I would say about uh, four meters long and I'm getting a good pull out and separation between the inner and the outer. So I'm managing using these uh, sort of line, long lines to get good pull and separation uh, from the outer and the inner without needing to resort to extra poles or anything like that at all. Uh, Dyneema is very thin, very very strong, so there's a negligible weight penalty. Unfortunately the Lanshan one uh, isn't particularly best with much space inside the inner, so you tend to be making quite a lot of use of the vestibule uh, when you're using the tent. And I've found that it's quite handy to be able to create more space under the vestibule. So here's another trick. I've attached uh, hits of my friendly length of Dyneema this time it's a four or five meter length uh, and it clips onto the bungee at the bottom of one door, goes around the main uh, guy line peg and up and out to uh, clip at the bottom of the bungee of the other door and then uh, it's uh, uh, tensioned with a uh, cleat or you could use a taut line hitch. And when that's pulled up it pulls the doors up and out and creates a huge the improved and increased uh, space uh, under the vestibule. So um, this would be very good in uh, hot conditions uh, to create some more shade. Uh, it would be quite good in uh, rain as well when you wanted to do some more packing and using of the vestibule. And if you want to you can sort of go for a half and half measure. So by releasing that uh, extra guy line a bit and closing the zip half I've created a half and half so I've got lots more space under the vestibule but I'm still nicely sheltered from any wind and rain. In the middle of the front of the uh, bathtub on the tent uh, there is a pull out point here and that helps to get the uh, floor of the tent nice and flat but um, it can be a real uh, the factory has a loop thing that goes uh, I think probably supposed to go around underneath the pole 
that's a, a bit of a problem if you want to take down the inner first and if there's a lot of tension on the pole it's a bit of a pick. So what I've done is to attach a length of a uh, nice bright yellow bungee and uh, run it to a clip. Now this is the type of clip that you see used on tents that pitch inner first and it hangs the inner from the poles on the tent so it's a simple sort of uh, question mark type shape and you can just run it out uh, when you're pitching the tent wherever the, to the pole where it is and if it's on a bungee then it doesn't you know, matter exactly how long it needs to be and it just clips on really neatly no more faffing around trying to uh, lift up the pole to wedge the strap underneath. So let's talk about the way that the inner attaches and hangs off uh, at the apex of the tent. Now in the middle of a trip to the Black Mountains a couple of months ago the clip that comes from the factory broke on this and the inner collapsed onto the head of my young son. That wasn't very good. So um, I would strongly suggest replacing that plastic clip that comes to the tent with something a little better. I've got one of these little cheap quite lightweight uh, black uh, carabiners but I've still got that attached to the top of the tent with a length of bungee uh, knotted in a, a double loop and knotted and that's because my son tends to bounce around inside the tent and a little bit of shock absorption is probably quite a good idea. But as you can see uh, the inner is uh, naturally sitting um, five six centimeters away from the pole. Uh, why is that an issue for me? Well it means that uh, it's sitting that much closer to the rear of the tent and so what I like to do is something to uh, make sure it sits as far forward towards the pole as possible and that's where this yellow cord comes in. So uh, what I have is a loop of yellow cord and the, and the cord grip doesn't matter what it is and that uh, goes through the loop at the top of the inner and around the pole and gets tensioned up and uh, so that means that the inner is held just that bit further away from the outer and I get much better separation between the inner and the outer, especially at the top of the tent. That's just a short length of cord and a cord grip. Now we've moved on to the inner of the tent and uh, this is where I think we can make quite a big difference. Now, even though I've pitched this very carefully and tensioned it up nicely, uh, there's no getting away from the fact that the inner of Lanchan tents is prone to uh, sort of sagging a bit and, and being a bit loose. And that means it can flap around, especially in winter conditions, it's a bit of a nuisance. So anything you can do to sort of tighten up the inner to stop it flapping around is a good thing. So uh, you can see it's just a bit, it's just a bit loose at the moment. And this is uh, where there's quite a neat, simple uh, modification you can make. So let me talk to you quickly about what I've done. I used this double seam and made a small incision uh, up to one point and ran a length of bungee and it comes out at a similar incision at the bottom here. Then it goes through a cord grip and that means that I can um, tension up or add extra tension to these corner seams of the tent. So uh, with those uh, installed at every corner of the inner um, I can apply a little bit of extra tension. I've pulled the bungee uh, through the cord grip a little bit and that's tightened up uh, each corner of the tent and it means it's not flapping around nearly as much so that's a real boon in uh, windy conditions and uh, it's cheap easy and lightweight uh, it's going to need eight small cord grips and a meter or two of two millimeter bungee another way of creating a bit more space inside the tent is to link the uh, tie up or wrap up points for the doors on the outer and the inner. They are adjacent, so it works really neatly and that creates a, a nice cons constant gap between the inner and the outer. So here I've got really good separation and I've maximized the space inside the tent. And if you're wondering if I've done that, how I hold the doors open, well, <laughs> these are my trusty clothes pegs. You don't have to use such gaudy colours but actually there is a benefit if you bright colours make them much easier to find in long grass if they fly off at a random moment. So 
beefy uh, tent pegs. These are very, very light plastic ones, quite durable. And you'd be surprised how many other uses they have around uh, camp, uh, principally sort of pegging uh, wet socks onto a guy line to dry them out overnight or something like that. So you might have noticed uh, the footprint that I've got on this tent at the moment. You can buy a footprint uh, that's from the manufacturers that's uh, made to measure. It's a pretty good value and uh, it's quite durable. It weighs uh, something around 100 grams off the top of my head, I think. Um, but you can make your own footprint from Polycro and that's this clear sort of plastic sheeting that you can see here. Now, Polycro plastic is commonly sold for secondary glazings or DIY kits from uh, B&Q and the like. I'll put a link to um, Amazon selling it uh, in the description. Uh, it's quite a tough plastic. It's very uh, durable and relatively cheap as well. And it comes in sheets of about 2 meters long by 1.5 meters wide and you just cut it to shape. And uh, because it comes in a roll that's 1.5 meters wide, yeah, um, it allows you to uh, do what I do, which is to have a little bit of the footprint protruding in front of the tent. And uh, this is a godsend. Um, I don't know about you, but when I'm getting in and out of the tent, uh, taking off my shoes, putting on my shoes or cooking or whatever, uh, to have a bit of a, a dry space where you can stand on or protected from the mud is an absolute boon. You need to cut a slot, of course, to allow you to put the pole in place. And here I just put a length of uh, duct tape on the polycro before I cut the slot. Which is the most neat way of doing it and it is dead simple. Also worth mentioning that the Polycrow is about half the weight of the factory footprint so if you really are gram saving that's an extra benefit as well. Right pay attention Bond this is where it gets interesting. So I like to be able to detach the inner and pack it away first especially in windy or wet conditions or uh, anything like that. So uh, if I do that, it's really nice to have the footprint still in place, there's somewhere to sit on if you like. And that also means I can use the outer and footprint on their own as a little temporary shelter uh, on the trail in bad weather. So what I have done is to change the attachment of the bathtub and the footprint uh, to the outer. So I have a length of bright yellow Dyneema that's looped through the same loop at the end that the peg goes through. Uh, that's attached with a bowline. Uh, it has a taut line hitch on it. I'll talk about taut line hitches in a second. And that goes to a bungee that in turn is taped to the footprint. So the footprint is permanently attached uh, at the same time as the outer. So when the outer goes up, the inner goes up at the same time automatically and will be in the right place because of the bungees and the uh, length of the cords. Then the inner is attached to that same bungee using a, a little uh, carabiner clip. So if I want to take down the inner first, I can simply unclip it from the footprint and that can come down solo. But in normal conditions, it's uh, left attached. So that means that the inner the outer and the footprint go up as one and they are kind of automatically in the right position. So that just needs some lengths of Dyneema, a few lengths of uh, bungee and a five small carabiner clips. That saves you hours when you're pitching the tent. Now here um, I've used a taut line hitch uh, you could use a, a normal cleat um, of any kind that you do particularly like. The taut line hitch does the same job. Um, it's a particularly useful knot. And uh, I think here I'll put up an image uh, that shows you how it's tied. Once you get the, the knack of it, it's really useful. Um, and if you just want to tighten up anything, it can be used on those uh, guy lines, the catenary lines or anything. So it's a really handy knot to master when you're on the trail. So that is uh, a really useful modification to make, even if you're using the factory footprint. Same idea applies. So the footprint and the outer are automatically erected together and normally the inner is two. So everything goes up as one and is immediately in the right place. You may have noticed that uh, next to all of my long guy lines, I've got these little lengths of bungee with a cord grip on. There's one on the side, there's one on the main guy line. 
and also on the rear guy line as well. Uh, what are they all about? Well, we've got quite a lot of long lengths of guy line here and Soz Law says that when you're trying to unpack and pitch up the tent, they will get tangled. Uh, but these are a really neat way of preventing that. So all I'm going to do is, when I take the tent down, coil up the guy line and tuck it inside this uh, bungee and tighten it up and that keeps it really neat and tidy. The first thing I want to share is that when I'm coiling up my guy lines, um, I always coil them into a figure of eight shape like this. And that means that uh, they are not going to get all twisted, which in turn leads to uh, tangling as well. So if you coil them in a figure of eight, I use my fingers to create the shape here, uh, they'll unravel much more easily and they won't have a built-in twist. All right, there you are, neatly coiled up, held in place with the bungee, going nowhere. When it comes to pitching the tent, it's really easy just to undo the bungee and the guy line comes out nice and tightly, without any twists or tangles. Perfect. And here's a good way of drying out and airing your tent when you've come back from a trip. Luckily at home I've got this uh, couple of panels of fencing and I've simply put in some cup hooks which I can uh, attach the guy out points to so that the uh, tent sits quite nicely and airs. So usually I leave it here for uh, an afternoon just to make sure it's properly bone dry before I pack it away. So just out of interest, this is what the Lanchan one weighs after I've made all of those modifications. Just over a kilo. Uh, that doesn't include pegs. So that's it. My suggestions for you, how you can modify your Lanchan one tent to make it better and more easy to use. And I hope you find some of them useful. Let me know how you get on with them. I've also made a video about how to pitch the Lanshan one because it can be a tricky thing. And in the meantime, there's also loads of videos about uh, walking adventures, particularly using the Lanshan tent on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see some more of those.